You're welcome. Welcome everyone to the November 1st um, SAC meeting. We're gonna get started with approval of the SAC minutes from March 22nd, I mean, October 4th. 4th. I so move. Second it. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, those are passed. Moving on to consideration of proposed 2024 SCORP operating and capital budgets. Let me take this. Again, just for a minute. I got to it up. Go ahead. Uh, uh, does anyone have any questions regarding the budget as presented? Any questions out there? No. All right. So one thing that um, we do want to bring to the SAC committee's attention, and. Uh, we did not anticipate this. We did fulfill the position that we had at the SWERF with a lead operator who resigned within five days of being hired. Oh, wow. I think it was a little much for him. Uh, his explanation was that after five days, he just felt that it was not going to be a good fit for him. Uh, and one of the things, because of the lacking of candidate pool that we had, um, one of the things that the, the uh, SCORF was looking at was hiring instead of the lead operator, because there was just, you know, we, we uh, received five applications in what, a month and a half, two months. And of those, we had three, and of the three, only one was really a strong candidate. Um, the other two were not that strong. Um, we're, we're considering uh, doing uh, an apprenticeship with Herb Wow, if the SAC committee approves, um, for a second operator in training position. I can tell you a little bit about the Herb Wow program. I've been working with them over the last week. Um, there is approximately $17,000 in funding for the two first two years to help cover cost for um, Current staff involvement is called a mentorship with the assignment of staff. And then also, Puget Sound Workforce has some grant funding, which they have not returned my calls yet on that. Um, and there is a graduated rate that you do have to pay for those employees. And when I had previously reported on this, uh, there was a misunderstanding on my part is the training that I had talked about is not 100% covered by Irwell. The actual training is 100% covered, but they are requesting a cost recap of $3,024 from the entity for that training. And so that's where there was a misunderstanding on my part. So the training is fully provided. We do have to pay for that training from Irwell but it does accelerate that person and ensures they get adequate training to get the proper skill set within a two year period to be at a journey level. Question, mm -hmm. um, do you, when you choose a candidate for this, do you have them sign a contract so that once you've paid for that training that they agree to give you so many years or repay the district? You know, the, the district doesn't have that type of agreement. But my understanding is that um, Irwell does require that unless we cut them loose, that they fulfill that. But if they get cut loose or they decide they don't want to do it, then there's really not much control that's either held by either. Mm -hmm. And yes, we know that situation. I'm sure the city's been in it too. You hire somebody, you invest money. A CDLA, that's... Like we six required grand. to in the first year. Yeah. And we pay for that training and people move on. And, and yeah, we uh, make them sign an agreement. So that's yeah. what I was asking. But we also need, we, are, we have one person missing out of the plan because he retired. So that's why mm -hmm. it's looking at two, even if, even if we don't uh, pick up the second one on the final thing, it gives them an opportunity to go somewhere else right. with their training. And uh, so does this does this modify the budget? Is that why this is being brought up at this point? No, we wouldn't really modify the budget, though the budgeted monies that are in there, if we do enter into this program, 
are going to be in excess of what's needed to fund that employee. But over time, it can be misleading, um, you know, to try to, to put that in without, mm -hmm. first of all, uh, having input and a consensus from the SAC committee. And then we still have to go through the hiring process. And um, just because you're offering an apprenticeship doesn't mean that somebody may want to accept it and because there is a, a lot of criteria and requirements for that person they are going to have to uh, basically be really involved in learning the job in a very short period and so I randy is my understanding correct that you would be hiring a individual that would be coming in just to do this apprenticeship program yes it would be okay. it's, it's a way to acquire substitute subsidies and ensure that we are training to the fullest extent with uh, an approved program by the Department of Labor and Industries under their apprenticeship program. And it, it, it's just another method for trying to attract good qualified individuals into these jobs. Um, I don't know if you've talked to your HR department. Um, you do get a lot of uh, return applications. I will just call them applications. Uh, from candidates, but they are definitely lacking in skill set, they're lacking in training, and they're lacking in basically following directions and being able to complete an application and return questionnaires that are submitted. Uh, we've had results from candidates even after paying for a service where they come back and say, yeah, I'm available, call me when you need me. And it's like no application, no resume, no supplemental questions are answered. It's just an expectation of, well, I'm here and you know, mm -hmm. I really don't have to put any effort into it, so. So in theory, you would be fully staffed, unfortunately, one of which would be an apprentice. Well, it would be two as an apprentice. Oh, I see, okay. One that we had planned for the additional FTE for this year, because we're running into some issues right. with um, our aging workforce and, and West Sound's working on developing some programs to kind of help with addressing those issues with the aging workforce and for, um, you know, uh, bringing on other people, uh, succession planning, and we're, we're kind of still working through that process right now, but it would have no impact on the budget as presented. Um, just to point out another, we could have this as a side conversation, but another place that I've been successful with finding specifically operators, whether it be for water or wastewater. And that is um, through Wetrick because of their training getting, in order for them to get their certification, they have to do field time, so. Yes, yeah. and we've had a couple of those folks and especially the treatment plant, it's interesting. They get there and it's like, oh, this is not what I thought of. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, water treatment is a little different when they get yeah. to wastewater, it's, yeah. I have a couple of questions, Randy. I'm, I'm kind of lost. What I, what I understand now is we had a bean operator retire, mm -hmm. and then we replaced him, plus we had an additional trainee. And now the, what I hear you say is the lead operator that we, uh, that we hired after a week has resigned. Correct. So, in lieu, so what you want to, you're asking is to get hired to an additional trainee. An additional that trainee is, on what was previously presented to the sewer advisory committee. We had that's one, that's one trainee. We had requested a single. No, and that's a big question. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm lost because we had one operator. Retire. Correct. And then we were going to re we replace him, but we we're also going to add an additional trainee, correct? Correct. And then the, the lead operator that we hired quit. Correct. So in, lieu, in lieu of of hiring that position again, just hire an additional trainee. Correct. Okay, so so we were gonna have two, but we're still gonna have two. The only difference is the one now is uh it's no longer going to be a position of a lead operator. Gotcha. So now it's just two, two trainees. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jerry. That explained it. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about you guys? Any questions about the budget? I don't nope. have any. Okay. Well, we've considered the proposed budget, which is on the agenda. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we uh, recommend it to the city. Okay. I'll second that. We're going. We've got a first and a second that the um, it's the budget is recommended to the city. We passed on. Jerry, um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Passes. Marina pump station update. Are we going to have one? Um, I just wanted to quickly update you that um, uh, we are starting, and we also had our funding for the Marina pump station was in jeopardy because of the length of time it's taken for us to get to construction. And we just found out yesterday that it looks like ecology is going to extend the loan. Oh, so, thank but, heavens. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. And, and actually the, uh, they're staging some equipment up uh -huh. there uh -huh. and the whole area by the Marina office is closed. Mm -hmm. And when do we break up? When do we get started? Um, they're dealing with some stormwater issues right now, trying to make sure that the parking lot is draining correctly and whatnot, because those those particular catch basins were not cleaned in this past round. Um, so we're dealing with that. And I do you remember what, what was said in the project meeting today, Dennis? I don't remember. Yeah, they're they're starting with the water utility work. I saw them pulling asphalt yesterday when I was down there. And just for a note, uh, we are doing a construction uh, webcam, so we'll be able to do time lapse that we'll be able to provide to the public and to this committee. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, so we've got that. That should be going up in the next day or two, so you'll be able to follow the progress throughout the project. And you guys, if you have a trouble sleeping at night, this will be a really good project to follow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> is that word about driving through town? Mm -hmm. oh, Another said, month. I think, right, yeah. three more weeks. Yeah. I think there's only three more weeks of construction and that'll be done. Then there'll be bigger fish to fry. Right. Yeah. 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 Kudos on getting that extension from ecology. We're having a hard time getting response out of the current. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good thing. Oh, thank heavens for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> our proposed next meeting, we're to the end. Do you uh, have something else? No, no. I was just thinking uh, <clears throat> time would be February, March. February, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in February, that would be Valentine's Day. Maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> heavens. Actually, it would probably fall on Valentine's Day. So the following week, maybe the 21st. Okay. Is that a holiday from the 21st? No, it's That's January. January. Yeah. Okay, so we'll aim for February 21st. Does that work for you, Jackie? Okay, February 21st, 2024. All right. Oh, John, I'm glad you got over where, the COVID. Where? Oh, where shall we have the meeting? Do you want to have it here? Welcome to <clears throat> or treatment plan, or we could go to the please not the treatment plan. The stairs are killer for me. Oh, okay. We could also walk in on the other side too. There's a oh, I didn't know that. Okay, one more time here, and then we go back to city hall. Okay. Right. Here. Right. No, but if we do the treatment plan again, we just have to. Uh, make sure we can open the door for you. We'll walk on Great Hall all the way to the office. Okay, that'd be great. You guys, we're adjourned. We're adjourning. Yes. But I want to show you something. Can I... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Don't go away. All right, thank you. Tell Kathy uh, big thanks for uh, putting up with me being in a meeting after she just got.